Well, hey there. This is the HVAC School Podcast. Thanks for listening to the podcast. And today we're going to be talking about a few words that Jim Bergman <laughs> has criticized me for apparently getting wrong sometimes. I don't remember which episode it was, but sometimes I guess I confuse the terms resolution and accuracy specifically. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do that, I want to thank our fantastic sponsors. Starting with Field Peace, I want to let you know that Field Peace has a booth at AHR. I'm going to give out some booth numbers here. So if you want to write them down, Field Peace is going to be at C6359. They're going to be demonstrating the job link probes, the MR45, which is the recovery machine that I like so much, the VP85, which is their vacuum pump. You can check it all out at the AHR conference or AHR expo, I should say, at C6359. Or find out more by going to fieldpeace.com. You can also find them at True Tech Tools, trutechtools.com. Use the offer code Get Schooled for a great discount. Uh, Refrigeration Technologies is going to be at B4417. I will be there on Monday the 14th. That's Monday the 14th, the first day of the show. I will be there around 3 p.m. If you want to stop by and say hey, that would be great. Very close to them is also another sponsor, NAVAC at B4323. And then uh, I'm going to be spending a lot of time at the Solder Weld booth. I'm going to be there pretty much all day Wednesday, and that's B4529. I want to take this opportunity just circling back to Field Peace to thank them for integrating their job link probes. Also, Testo has done the same recently with their smart probes, but integrating them with MeasureQuick makes it really easy. I was just working on it with a tech just this morning, actually, connecting the probes to the MeasureQuick app. It's a beautiful, beautiful connection, and they really work fantastically. If you want to see those demonstrated, have any questions to ask, you can go check out Field Peace at C6359. All right, so we're going to hop right into the conversation with Jim about Accuracy, resolution, and precision. We have a new guest, somebody who I just figured I'd give him a shot. So Jim Bergman, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Hey, thanks, Brian. Good to hear from you again. (laughs) All right. So this is a short episode. This episode is about something that Jim has consistently written me about. I've tried to get this right six or 17 times, and apparently I keep getting it wrong. And that is the subject of the difference primarily between precision and accuracy, but we'll also throw a resolution in there. So let's talk about it in the context of taking a measurement. So when I say measuring amperage, for example, what is the difference between resolution and the accuracy of an amperage measurement? Whenever you're looking at a test meter, the first thing you got to say is, because you're talking about accuracy and resolution, how accurate is your meter? Meaning the best way to think of it, I think, is like shooting arrows. And if you were to take a target and you start shooting arrows at the target and the bullseye, if you could hit the bullseye every single time, you would be both precise and accurate. Accurate meaning that you're hitting the center of the bullseye every single time and precise meaning that it's precisely the same spot you're hitting. And you could be, you know, if we took that same bullseye and, and let's say we shot a really tight group to the left top center of the bullseye, right? Well, we're still very precise if if they're grouped very tightly, but we're not very accurate because accuracy means that we're consistently hitting the bullseye. Precise means that we're grouping them very accurately. When you're looking at those two things, just the overall terms, I think are just helpful to understand because like when we're setting micron gauges side by side, this is a real common thing because a lot of guys don't have any way of checking the accuracy of a micron gauge so they compare it to another micron gauge. You can take the AccuTools BlueVac gauge sets, any of the BlueVacs, and set them side by side. And every single one of them will read within a few microns each other at any micron level. And that shows a great level of precision. But what that doesn't show us is accuracy because we don't know if they're accurate or not. What we do know is they're very precise. Now, the way that we know they're accurate is we know that they were calibrated against a reference, a source, something that we know is a standard or is a highly accurate tool. And because each one of those was calibrated against a reference source and they're all reading the same, now we know that they're precise and accurate, right? I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. So an example of this would be, I think one that we run into a lot would be infrared thermometer, where we can use an infrared thermometer to measure the difference between maybe two different breakers, circuit breakers, for example. And we're not so concerned whether or not we have the exact temperature degree number correct, but we want to know that there is some precision in the differences between temperatures. And so I guess a lot of it has to do with what is the zero point. If it's not zeroed out properly, then it might read something that's 10 degrees off, but it's still going to be precise in that it's going to still measure the same temperature at the same point over and over again. Is that a fair way of thinking about that or am I doing this weird? I think it's you're on the right track there. I mean, it's in our industry, a lot of people don't realize that we don't need a 
high degree of accuracy for every single measurement that we take. But in some cases, we really do. If we're measuring 120 volts on a furnace coming in, do we really care if it's 117 volts or 125 volts or 122 volts or 123 volts? Are you going to adjust the voltage regulator on the input of the furnace to get the voltage to exactly to 120? No, I mean, that doesn't exist on there. So what we're really concerned with is their voltage present or not, right? Now, that's for the most part, because then if we want to know, do we have a correct utilization voltage? Well, then we might need a meter with a little bit more accuracy to it, because now we're not concerned as the voltage exists or does it not exist. We're actually concerned is does it exist at a level that's high enough for the equipment to operate satisfactorily? So we know that there's a percentage of the nominal voltage that we need to be within. What is that, Brian? You should know off the top of your head. It's within what? Plus or minus 5%. Yeah, plus or minus 5%. So we know if our voltage dips too low that we're going to have issues with maybe circuit boards not working properly or even our, because we have a transformer in there, we have line voltage and low voltage. Maybe that low voltage will drop down low enough that we start to have problems with the circuit board circuitry not working right. Depending on what we're doing, you have to have a certain level of accuracy, a certain level of precision. And then what we didn't talk about yet is resolution. And that's the smallest amount of change that you can resolve. The resolve meaning detect. We need to be able to detect uh, small changes. We might do that if we're doing a uh, combustion air zone testing, where we're trying to see if our CAS is going too negative. We have to have a resolution of about a 0.1 micron. We want to see if there's small changes in the building pressure when we're turning on other appliances that are in the combustion air zone. So we're trying to see when we turn on the dryer, does the pressure go up or does the pressure go down? When we turn on the hot water tank, does the pressure go up or does the pressure go down? When we open a door, does it go up or down? So we need to be able to resolve those small changes in pressure, and we need a meter that's got a high enough resolution. Like a YouTube manometer that reads inches of water column might have a resolution of a tenth of an inch, where a Testo 510i might have a resolution of thousands of an inch of water column. That's, again, the smallest amount of change that we can detect. That's your resolution. And typically, when we look at meter resolution, you have a certain number of counts in a meter and then a certain number of decimal places after that that you can resolve to. So you might be able to read like uh, 1.001 volts, right? Or it might be uh, 1.0 volts or it might be one, one volt even. It just depends on the accuracy and resolution and precision of your meter, right? And that's all those things come into play. And when you're buying a tool, you want to make sure that you're buying the most accurate and precise tool you have with no more resolution than you need. Because the smaller change we can detect, usually the more expensive the product becomes. And if you don't need that resolution, there's no need paying for it. Well, there's also a lot of instruments that have a level of resolution built into them, meaning it gives you a number of decimal places, for example, or reads a scale that actually isn't practical in conjunction with its accuracy, right? I mean, I've run into this when you start to look at certain pressure gauges that will measure into the Pascal zone, but it may measure in the one Pascal or maybe even the tenth of a Pascal as far as what it shows from a resolution standpoint. But then its accuracy is plus or minus five Pascals, for example, which is an example of displaying a resolution that really isn't met out by the accuracy of the instrument. So that's a good one I always look, go back to is humidity measurements, right? When we're looking at changes in wet bulb temperature, like Field Peace has a set of hydrometers, Testo has a set of hydrometers, and they'll resolve down into the tenth of a percent of relative humidity and tenth of a degree of wet bulb. We may not know that those are accurate, but they're usually pretty precise. In other words, we can side by side, they'll read right down to the tenth of a degree of wet bulb the same. Now, why would that be valuable if they're not accurate? Well, in the air conditioning industry, we're always concerned with the change in wet bulb. So the, the change across the coil, like uh, wet bulb in versus wet bulb out, right? Or temperature in versus temperature out. So the fact that those may not have the highest degree of absolute accuracy isn't so important because we're looking at the change in wet bulb, not the overall absolute wet bulb what it is. Now, if you were charging the air conditioner and you need to know what the return air wet bulb was and the outdoor air temperature is, well, then you'd need something that has a little bit more accuracy than you might if it was just measuring change, as long as they're precise across their entire range. A lot of these tools, it's really interesting though, you're talking about, I'm not seeing quite as many tools as I used to that have a higher level of resolution than they do accuracy. I think those are sort of going by the wayside with MeasureQuick and all the work we do with MeasureQuick, we're testing across the board and we're seeing better and better measurements all the way across because we do get the chance. Like a couple of months ago, I went to NIST and I took a slew of different probes with me and it was actually you know, probably $100,000 worth of reference instruments there. And the measurement quality was so high 
that we couldn't tell if NIST was right or I was right. And they had a $20,000 chilled mirror hydrometer versus a $70, let's say, testo probe I was using. So the tools are getting better and better. I think really we're at a point where they're probably the best that we're going to see. Because what's happening is we're the sensors are getting smaller and smaller, and it's given us just overall a faster, better reading with higher accuracy. I mean, that's just we're just seeing better and better sensors out there right across the board. No matter what you pay for them, they're all pretty darn good. Yeah. And just back to the difference between the resolution and the accuracy, I'm thinking another good example of this would be techs have a compound gauge or they did historically that could measure down into the negative pressure range. And so it may be very accurate in that it might show you a true measurement from a pressure standpoint, PSI standpoint, but that it doesn't have the accuracy at the resolution necessary to give you any good information when it comes to a micronic vacuum. So that would be another example of something that's accurate, but it's not precise enough. Yeah. And that's like trying to measure microns with your analog gauges is like trying to measure feet with your car odometer. It's just not going to work. It can't resolve. Those measurements are so tiny at that point that the analog gauge can't resolve them or you can't resolve them reading the gauge. You couldn't tell the difference between the 25,000 microns and 500 microns or on that gauge, let alone the difference between 1,000 and 500. Because now we're talking like a, a millimeter of mercury, which is probably the width of the needle on the gauge. And then you've got parallax, which means are you looking at the gauge straight on? Back in the day, like the old Simpson meters used to have a needle. They had a mirror behind the needle. And that was so you could line up the needle and the reflection with the actual needle. And then you knew you were staring straight on at it. That was your parallax to make sure that everybody was looking at the meter with exactly the same angle and exactly the same way. And with the old ohm meters and stuff, that was really important because guys in electronics, they needed to get a very accurate measurement, let's say, of a resistance or something like that. But when it gets into our analog gauges, well, that's an indicator of vacuum. It, it's definitely not a precise or accurate way of doing it. And it definitely doesn't have the resolution. All right, there we go. There's our short episode. Thanks for joining us, Jim. All right, Brian. Hey, it was good to talk to you. And hopefully you're going to get this resolved in your mind. So next time you can be more precise because your accuracy <laughs> is just off the charts when it comes to what off you're talking about. Off the charts. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, buddy. All right. Bye. Bye. 